friends and my dear students once again welcome back to my channel well in this video we will be talking about the bohr's effect but before we begin with the bohr's effect let me tell you that in previous two videos we have talked about the links are given in the i button we talked about the chloride shift and the reverse chloride shift in which we have seen how the transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place at the level of tissue and at the level of alveoli so there is a change of the gases so it's a gaseous change so we talked about the haldens effect we talked about the hamburger phenomenon which is alternatively known as your reverse chloride shift and chloride shift respectively in this video like i have told you we will be talking about the bohr's effect so for that to understand first we have to pay attention to a graph a graph which is said to be a oxygen dissociation curve and that is what we represent in the form of graph so let's quickly make this graph here say so you have got y axis and you have got x axis i think it's visible yeah so along the x axis we measure the i'll write it here with a different color along the x axis we measure that partial pressure of oxygen and it is being measured in mmhg i say we love that on the other hand along the y axis we measure the percentage of saturation of hemoglobin so i'll write it here percentage of hemoglobin saturation right now let me quickly do the marking here so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 so and similar here 10 20 Thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred. So one hundred ten and one hundred twenty. Right. So this is my graph. So let me write it here. So this is what you have got. So guys, first let's understand the meaning of. partial pressure say a gas x is given to you as you know uh, air is a mixture of gases right so out of that mixture say x is a gas which is given to you and you are asked to identify and calculate the partial pressure what do we say we say that partial pressure means the pressure exerted by that particular gas into the mixture of gases this is what you call as a partial pressure so if we talk about partial pressure of oxygen that means that particular oxygen given to you how much pressure it is exerting on the amount of that mixture of the gases and if we talk about the hemoglobin saturation what do you mean by hemoglobin saturation it means that the if i say a particular hemoglobin given to you is saturated means that hemoglobin is no more in a position to obtain oxygen anymore it's completely saturated with the oxygen so if i say hemoglobin is 100% saturated excuse me that means that hemoglobin is no more in a position to obtain any oxygen any molecule of oxygen right now if we talk about the data right here what do we see we say that at the level of 10 mm of partial pressure the hemoglobin saturation come at around say 10 in case of 20 it comes around say almost 20 to 25 say 20 in case of 30 it becomes your 45 to 50 like like this it will go on and on and on and say for 50 it will come at around say 80 right and say at 95 here you will get the value as 
So you have got the 100. So if you clearly observe, now you will see you are getting a graph like this. So it is a sigmoid shaped graph, right? The whole graph. And this curve is actually sigmoid shape, right? Now understand. It's normal thing. So first thing first you understand this at the level of when the partial pressure of oxygen is 95, the hemoglobin is 100% saturated. You see, this is the point of saturation. That means what? Hemoglobin cannot take any more amount of oxygen. That is what we call as the saturation. Now, what are the implications of this? What we can understand from this? From this standard curve, what do we say? Either there will be a shift in this way, means shifting to the left hand side of the curve, and it can also shift to the left hand, right hand side of the curve. So, one shifting towards the right hand side one shifting toward the left hand side right so the first question comes how it comes what are the factors we actually help in getting these two types of curve over here now let's talk about the first one that is the that one i have shown in the red color you see that in this curve what we are seeing no matter how much you increase the partial pressure of oxygen, the 100% saturation of the hemoglobin will never be achieved. Again, I am saying, no matter how much partial pressure of oxygen you increase, the 100% of the saturation for hemoglobin will never be achieved. That means what? Hemoglobin is not taking up oxygen. This is case number one. You talk about the right one. At a very low level of partial pressure of oxygen, the hemoglobin can easily achieve 100% saturation. You see here, it has saturation has come at around here, right? This point. So that means it is coming exactly around 50 to 60. It's a good thing, right? Now what are the probable question that comes from here? We say that a shift towards the left hand side and shift towards the right hand side. Right? Now first let's talk about the probable reasons for which there is a shifting towards the right hand side. It is not good of course. No matter how much you increase in case of partial pressure, it's not going to get the 100% saturation. It's not good for the cells as well, right? So if you see in this way, what do we say? We say that if level of carbon dioxide, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide increases, right? Again, remember what I told you in hamburger phenomena. An increase in amount of carbon dioxide favors the dissociation of oxyhemoglobin, right? So you can actually see that if you increase the carbon dioxide, the oxyhemoglobin bond formation will not be possible. It will be broken very frequently, right? This is what we call as a Bose effect. Because if I say partial pressure of carbon dioxide is increasing, that means what? In, in terms of pH, I can say the acidity is also increasing, right? If you increase the carbon dioxide in the blood, that means what? The acidity will also increase. Alternatively, can I also say the level of pH is actually decreasing, right? One more point. If your body temperature also tend to increase, it also favors 
the dissociation of the oxyhemoglobin into oxygen and hemoglobin. It was discovered by the Christian Bohr and hence it is said to be the Bohr effect. Now if you talk about the shift towards the left hand side which is actually good, whatever reasons you have written over here, the same reason in the form of opposite form will favor the shifting of the graph towards the left hand side. So if I write, if I have written over here increasing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, so definitely it will be your decrease in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. That means your acidity will also decrease. If your acidity decreases, that means your pH is actually increasing. And last but not the least, you have got temperature here, body temperature. So on decreasing body temperature can also result the graph to be shifted towards the left hand side. Right? So what is the moral of this? What is the moral of the graph shifting towards the left hand side? It's actually a good thing happening to your body that with a low amount of oxygen, your hemoglobin is reaching towards its saturation point. But what if you have towards the right hand side? No matter how much you increase the amount of oxygen, your hemoglobin is not in a position to reach the 100% saturation. Right? So this is what you call as a Bohr's effect. And the whole graph which represents the oxygen dissociation is what we call as an oxygen dissociation curve. And this is needless to say you have got a sigma shift. Right? So that's it guys. I hope you have enjoyed and understood this topic. It's very easy. And like I have told you in the beginning, once again, I am giving you the uh, link in the i button for chloride shift and the reverse chloride shift. Please do not forget to watch that, that particular video. So that's it for today. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to press the like button. And of course, those who are watching my channel for the first time, the first task I'm giving to you is subscribe without fail. So till then, bye-bye, take care.